Well, did you learn the Hawaiian language in school? No, it wasn't taught in the schools when I was growing up. Was it untaught in the school? It I was mean, untaught, was it, yes. It, was, it wasn't allowed. Yeah, we've, mm -hmm. we've encountered this in so many traditions. Yes, it wasn't allowed when my grandmother was in school, nor my parents. Yeah. But uh, now that my sons are in school, it's allowed. Yeah, <laughs> so it took four generations. That's a very generations big change, right, yes, isn't it? true. Yeah, very true. and something that indicates how important the notion of pluralism is in our world. Yeah. Only we just have to learn to believe that True. it's important to do it. Yes, so, yes. Mm -hmm. so, but but you knew the Hawaiian from early times from your parents, grandparents. Well, some of it was harsh, uh, scolding, you know, and uh, especially my great grandmother. She didn't speak any English, so that her Hawaiian to us was always scolding. <laughs> and then we, <we'd, you> know, <laughs> so we didn't like that kind of Hawaiian at all. <laughs> but now we joke about it and have little in-family things, you know. And my sons will scold me in the same way that I remember my great grandmother scolding me. But then it's for fun and in love. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, what about this, the instruments? How did the, how did you start encountering well, the instruments? Well, I think like all primitive peoples, you know, that have the uh, basic drum idea, the coconut log and covered with a shark skin and uh, lashed, you know. Then from those uh, 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 drums, smaller ones are used. This is the half uh, uh, coconut, and it's uh, a color skin, uh, a skin of a scaleless fish, and lashed, and they lash it to the knee. So if one hand, they would use the drum rhythm, and then with the other hand, they would use this punil, the coconut knee drum, and this is the ka, the striker, and it's merely braided key leaves. Mm -hmm. So you'd have a, a basic idea of a drum like this. This has a little time. <laughs> yes, that's a great, yes, beautiful, children. really beautiful construction. Yes, uh -huh. The, the uh, you know, sometimes you have trouble getting two things to stay together with yes. adhesive tape or <laughs> scotch tape, and you look at the kinds like of... using twisters to make my lay this one. Yes, right. Well, we were talking early this morning. Nona was just putting together some flowers from our garden. Now, the, the flowers are very important, aren't they? Yes, Extremely yes. important. In a way well, that's very hard for people to comprehend. Mm -hmm. That is, I mean, you can't walk into a house without immediately doing something with flowers. Yes, well, because, uh, too, that we are dancers, we have been taught to uh, revere the forest, that we wouldn't walk in and just simply begin picking the leaves. We would chant, in the forest on the ridges of the mountains dwells the presence of the goddess Laka. She lives in the source from whence comes the great mist. So we would chant. Ate tu a hivite tu alo no tu ana o la kaita mauna he. No ho ana o la kaita po o ta o. O la ka kumuhu la. Because she is the patron goddess of the dance. And then we would feel as though we could walk in and pick the mile and begin to make our lays. And then we always say a word of aloha to say thank you for allowing us. And then we would put some of the greens around the altar where we would be doing the prayers. And in the early hour of the morning, we would chant to uh, uh, the goddess Pele because being on the big island. So it depends where you are geographically to whom you would offer your prayers. Mm -hmm. And the music and the chanting is always a part of it. Yes. There is a Native American proverb that actually a number of Native American tribes on the mainland say, and it is, we must greet every object we meet yes. with song. Yes. Every object. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and in a way, of course, that translates as a beautiful kind of what we call these days ecology. Mm -hmm. But of course, peoples like the early Hawaiians and others have known that for a long time. Yes, and they wouldn't begin to fashion an instrument without first selecting the right tree, you know, and making the appropriate uh, prayers. And then each stage of the making of it and the, the whittling of it, you know, they would have certain prayers. And, and then uh, uh, they would be ready to hear the sound of it, you know, and telling the story of up above the birds fly. Below us, the flowers are growing. In the mountains, 
the trees grow tall. In the sea, the fishes swim quietly. <laughs>